So hi, I'm Dr. Paul Connolly. I'm, I work in the department and I'm a reader in atmospheric science. Part of my research involves working with the UK Met Office to help improve weather and climate forecasts. And to do this, it can involve using a variety of techniques, um, such as using computer simulations. That's one way we work with the Met Office. But often, um, the questions that you want to answer, they rely on either field work or laboratory work, laboratory me and laboratory measurements too. We have labs at the University of Manchester where we do this research and often undergraduates can benefit from these labs by undertaking their project in the labs. And I'm going to do something a little bit different today. I'm going to try um, an experiment right here. And because I've got limited time, I recorded, that. I recorded it this morning. So we'll see if it works. I have a video I'm going to share. So you might need to adjust your volume. Today I want to talk about the importance of ice crystals in clouds. Clouds are important as they reflect the sun's rays. They can stop the heat escaping and can also result in rain on the ground. This picture shows a cloud that has formed ice. We can see that the ice has led to a gap in the cloud and rain falling out. That is very significant and important to the water cycle and the amount of radiation that gets to Earth. A crucial step is the formation of ice in the cloud. Ice crystals do not necessarily form in the atmosphere at zero degrees Celsius. It requires a special type of particle known as an ice nucleating particle for the ice to form around. In the atmosphere, these are present as a special type of aerosol particle. So here we'll do an experiment where we put water drops on a glass slide and we'll watch them freeze. To start, I have one glass slide and two glasses of water. I'm going to mix some gypsum powder into one of the glasses of water. Gypsum is present in the atmosphere as aerosol particles in small amounts. I will then coat the glass slide with some water repellent so that the drops don't spread out too much. So I'll just put that some water repellent on and then dry the glass slide with a cloth. Now I'll put some water drops containing gypsum on one side of the glass slide. So I'll just put some out there. And also I'll use the pet to put some plain water drops on the other side. Okay, we're done. This is an instrument that has been used in student projects. It is able to cool water droplets in a controlled way. The glass slide goes on this white square and we film the drops as the temperature is lowered. So I'm just going to place the glass slide on the white square And fasten it down. The, the cooling cycle 
and the recording of the video is controlled by a computer. So here is the recorded video. Plain water drops are at the top in this view and the gypsum water drops are at the bottom. This is a statistical process. We cannot say exactly when a drop will freeze, but we can characterize the average freezing temperature of the drops and also the standard deviation of the freezing temperatures. Generally, we see that the plain water droplets freeze at a lower temperature. Therefore, the composition or the types of aerosol particles in the atmosphere are able to modify a cloud's properties. This is known as an aerosol indirect effect because the aerosol particles in the atmosphere indirectly affect the amount of radiation reaching the Earth's surface because they alter the properties of clouds. You can learn about this and much more on the atmospheric science pathway. Today I want to talk about them. Okay, so I'll just stop that share. Um, so in terms of the question, what temperature does water freeze at? It seems that the water I used, when we had no gypsum in the water, was around about minus 18 degrees Celsius, which is a, a bit of surpri a surprise to some people when they hear it for the first time. Um, actually, pure water, really pure water, can get to temperatures as low as minus 36 degrees Celsius before it freezes and it's in the atmosphere, it's all to do with these special particles known as ice nucleating particles. They catalyze the formation of ice, uh, making it possible for the clouds to snow, and also that snow can fall through the atmosphere and melt and then fall as rain. So often when it rains, it's not a liquid droplet that starts falling to earth, it's an ice crystal or a snowflake that starts fall into earth, which then melts and falls as rain. And I think I'll end there.